Snorkel self-propelled elevating work platforms are versatile and popular tools for reaching overhead work sites. SR series models are larger and more powerful than slab scissor lift and are designed for much greater stability. The first two numbers of their model numbers designate approximate ground to platform heights, which range from approximately 25 feet to just under 40 feet. They are equipped with a patented articulating rear axle and four-wheel drive to provide up to 40% grade ability to power over and around job site obstacles and debris. Gasoline, diesel, and LP gas-powered engines are available. The capacities of the large platforms range from 750 pounds to 1,750 pounds. This video is designed to show you the correct, safe operation of these lifts which should be operated only by a trained operator. This video focuses on snorkel elevating work platform operation. It is not designed to replace reading the operator's manual for your specific machine or hands-on instruction from a qualified trainer. Prior to operation, you should be thoroughly familiar with the operator's manual and receive proper hands-on training. You should be familiar with all the various safety decals and warning devices. You also need to know factory, OSHA, and local regulations concerning operation and any local, state, or employer rules that require the use of fall restraints. And of course, you should always dress appropriately and wear proper safety protection gear when operating any equipment and on any job site. There are three major hazards when operating any work platform. Electrocution, crushing, and tip over. Following the procedures in the manual and this video will help you to guard against these hazards. Advanced knowledge of the specifics of the machine you will be operating and its controls, gauges, and safety devices are important. These matters are covered in the operator's manual, which also contains an operator's troubleshooting chart. The manual shows all the safety-related placards and decals on the machine and exactly where they are placed. When you see warnings like these, heed them precisely. SR series lifts have two control panels, a lower panel for control from the ground and an upper control panel on the work platform. The lower control panel is on the right side of the machine on the rear of the hydraulic compartment. The lower controls include an emergency stop switch, the start switch, the choke on gasoline-powered models, the glow plug activator and indicator light on diesel models, the hydraulic oil warm-up switch, lift indicator light, which indicates when the platform is level, the platform lift lower switch, and the upper lower control selector, which determines which control panel is active. It also may contain a fuel option switch for dual fuel engines. Controls for operating the machine from the platform are located on the upper control panel. Controls on this panel are the emergency stop switch, the engine start switch, the choke on gasoline models, the glow plug activator and glow plug indicator light on diesel models, switches for remote controls of the outriggers, and the lift indicator light which works like the one on the lower control panel. If the green light is on, the platform can be raised. If the light is off, the platform cannot be raised because the platform is not level. The outriggers are not set or there is a malfunction involving the articulating axle set switch. The upper control panel may also have a switch to activate the hydraulic generator to power a 120 volt AC outlet on the platform. A joystick controls platform and drive functions from the upper controls. The joystick has a safety interlock of the type referred to as safety interlock switch. The joystick functions are active only if the interlock is squeezed against it. The lift drive selector switch determines whether the joystick is a lift lower control for the platform or a drive control to move the SR forward or backward the machine will not drive and lift at the same time. The speed switch determines the speed range. Turtle means slow movement. Rabbit means fast. For proper joystick controller operation, 
the operator must pay close attention to the decal on the platform control box when driving forward or reverse and lifting or lowering. Controller operation may vary from machine to machine. If the operator is still uncertain of controller operation, review the operator's manual in the document holder on the machine that he is operating for correct controller operation. The further you push or pull the joystick, the faster the motion, except when lowering. The rocker switch on top of the joystick turns the front wheels left or right. The wheels do not return to straight ahead unless you guide them back with this switch. Snorkel SR Series lifts have a number of special alarms and safety devices that must be working when the machine is in use. Check each of them as part of the machine's daily pre-start inspection. There are red emergency stop switches on both control panels. Anytime one is disengaged, the entire machine stops and nothing moves. On the upper control box, the large red button is the emergency stop. Once it is pressed, you will need to pull it back outward before the SR can be restarted. The emergency stop switch on the lower panel works similarly. Push the switch cover downward to stop machine operation. You will have to move it back up manually before restarting. There are also two alarms on SR machines. One is on the lower control panel and the other on the upper control panel. A continuous sound indicates an engine shutoff condition. High temperature, low oil pressure, or alternator not charging. If this alarm sounds, immediately lower the platform and correct the problem. The forward drive and platform lowering alarms sound like this. One beep per second. A faster beeping twice per second is used for the backing alarm. The tilt alarm makes a warbling sound like this. It warns that the machine is out of level and a tipping hazard exists. While it is sounding, you cannot raise the platform or drive. If you hear this sound, immediately lower the platform completely and drive the machine to a firm level surface. Other safety devices include the swinging platform gate and a ground fault interrupt AC outlet on the platform. Optional safety devices include lanyard anchor points, outriggers, a bubble level on machines with outriggers, and a flashing light that activates when the key switch is on. An operator horn that can be turned on to get the attention of people on the ground when you are working aloft is also available. It only works when the battery disconnect switch is on, the emergency stop is up, and the control panel selector is set to upper controls. With those basics behind us, let's move on to operation. Safe operation begins with a pre-start inspection of the equipment and the work area. Check all of the things mentioned in the pre-start inspection chart in the operator's manual. Inspection should be done on a smooth, level surface. The inspection includes checking for leaks of fuel, engine oil, coolant, and hydraulic oil. Check all the fluid gauges as well as checking the air filter and brakes. If you are not sure how to do those things, complete instructions are included in the operator's manual. Check for any structural damage, loose bolts, or broken welds. Check the tires and wheels for signs of damage and make sure all of the safety features are in good condition. The safety prop is used to support the scissors structure when access to the scissors arm components or chassis is required. Always use the safety prop when the platform is raised during inspection and maintenance. Start the engine from the lower controls and check the charging system gauge. Operate the controls and make sure everything is working correctly, including the emergency lowering feature. Now, inspect and operate the upper controls. Finish up by checking the flashing light and AC GFCI. Finally, make sure the operator's manual is in its proper place and that all decals and placards are in good condition. 
The other phase of your safety inspection is inspecting the area where you will be working. You will also need to be aware of whether there will be other persons working in or walking around the area and whether there will be vehicles present. You need to check for electrical hazards, tipping hazards, hazardous and flammable materials, and anything overhead that the platform could run into or cause a head or crushing injury to the operator. Outdoors, be aware of wind conditions that could create a tipping hazard. Snorkel elevating work platforms are not electrically insulated and are not designed to protect the operator from electrocution. Carefully observe safe approach distances for electrical conductors. Ignoring safe distances can result in severe electrical shock or death. These machines can be driven on grades with the platform lowered. The SR2584 can be driven on grades up to 40%, the SR3284 37%, and the SR4084 32%. The machine must be on a firm level surface if the platform is to be raised. Before using the work platform in any location that has been classified as hazardous, make certain that it is approved and of the type required by ANSI NFPA 505 for use in that type of location. Observe all other safety rules and best practices for operating equipment, such as never operating a machine that is not working properly. If possible, have another trained operator in the area on the ground in case of emergency. When ready to start operating the work platform, first start the engine using the proper procedure for the fuel system. The first steps are always the same. Make sure the battery disconnect switch is on and the emergency stop switch is not activated. Set the control selector on the lower controls to lower controls. If the machine is fueled by LP gas, you will also need to open the valve on top of the LP tank counterclockwise until it stops and set the fuel select switch to LP gas. With gasoline engines, if the engine is cold, press and hold the choke switch while you turn the key. Turn the key to start and hold it there until the engine starts or for 20 seconds, whichever comes first. When the engine starts, release both the key and the choke. If the engine does not start in 20 seconds, turn the key to off, release the choke, and wait 60 seconds before trying again. For diesel engines, once the battery, emergency stop, and control selector switches are set, turn the key to on, but not all the way to start. If the engine is at ambient temperature, momentarily press the glow plug switch a light will indicate that the glow plugs are on. When the light goes out, turn the key to start and hold it there till the engine starts or for 20 seconds, whichever comes first. When the engine starts, release the key. If the engine does not start in 20 seconds, turn off the key and wait 60 seconds, then repeat the starting sequence with the glow plug switch and key. When raising the platform on the SR4084, which has outriggers as a standard feature, the platform cannot be raised above 32 feet if the outriggers are not set properly. To raise the platform from the lower controls with the engine running, press and hold the platform lift lower switch up. If movement is sluggish and the ambient temperature is below about 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero degrees Celsius, the hydraulic oil probably needs warming. To do this, set the hydraulic oil warm-up switch to up for 5 to 10 minutes, then turn it off. To operate the machine from the upper controls, enter the platform and latch the safety chain closed. Make sure the emergency stop switch is not engaged. If the engine has been turned off, start it from the upper control panel using the same procedure used from the ground. Before driving the machine, make sure the speed control is set where you want it. Use the slow speed if driving very close to other objects. For proper joystick controller operation, the operator must pay close attention to the decal on the platform control box when driving forward or reverse and lifting or lowering. 
controller operation may vary from machine to machine. If the operator is still uncertain of controller operation, review the operator's manual in the document holder on the machine that he is operating for correct controller operation. The further you move the joystick, the faster the speed, based on the speed range selected. Steer by using the rocker switch on top of the joystick. To stop the machine, return the joystick to the center or neutral position and release the safety interlock. You could execute a more sudden emergency stop by releasing the joystick and sharply striking the emergency stop switch straight in. The platform cannot be operated while moving. To operate it, set the lift drive control to lift. Now the joystick operates the platform. Push for down. Pull toward you for up. Remember that the engine must be running and on the SR4084, the outriggers must be deployed if you want to raise the platform above 32 feet. To deploy the outriggers from the upper controls with the platform lowered, pull and hold outrigger switches backward, one at a time, until all four outrigger pads contact the ground. Then, check the bubble level to make sure the work platform is level. Finish the process by adjusting the outriggers as necessary to level the chassis. The outriggers are designed to give the machine extra stability, not extra height. Never try to increase the platform height by overextending the outriggers. Secondly, remember that soft soil may compress differently under the outriggers. To avoid a tipping hazard, check the bubble level periodically during operation to make sure the platform is still level. Correct the condition as necessary. On machines without outriggers, never raise the platform if a tire is low, shows serious damage, or is obviously leaking air. When the joystick returns to the center position, the platform will stop moving. Some machines have two position extendable platforms. To extend the platform, stand on the non-extendable part facing the front of the machine. Raise the handles and notice the locking pin on the left side of the platform. Push the handle forward to extend the platform. Make sure the pin locks the platform deck into position. The distribution of the rated workload changes when the extendable platform is extended. Read the decal on the platform to determine safe weight distribution. Operators of these elevating work platforms must know how to perform two emergency functions, emergency stop and emergency bleed down. The two emergency stop switches provide a fast and easy method of turning the main power to the machine off. Remember, they must be reset before the engine can be restarted. Emergency bleed down allows you to lower the platform from the upper controls if there is an engine or hydraulic system malfunction. To perform this function, first make sure the emergency stop button is not pushed. Squeeze the interlock and push the joystick forward. The platform should lower. If it does not, call for help from a person on the ground. That person should make sure the battery disconnect switch is on, that the emergency stop switch is not engaged, and that the start switch is on and the selector switch in the lower controls position. Then, try to lower the platform from the lower control panel. If it will not lower, next, reach through the opening immediately below the lower control panel and screw open the emergency bleed down valve the platform should lower. You can control the speed of descent or stop it with the valve, but you will not be able to raise the platform with the valve. When the platform has completely lowered, close the valve. If this procedure does not work, you will need to refer the problem to a qualified technician. This concludes the video training module on safe operation of Snorkel SR Series Rough Terrain Scissor Lift. Before operating an SR, new operators should thoroughly read the operator's manual, paying close attention to the cautions, dangers, and warnings throughout.
and to details of procedures you may not yet fully understand. All new operators should also have hands-on training supervised by a qualified trainer. You'll find your snorkel work platform to be versatile and easy to use and a wonderful tool to help you get the job done efficiently and safely.